Hi folks, all you people that love ship's memorabilia and old time radio stuff, you will know what this is. This is a ship's radio room clock. And I made this for the grand total of $20. Stick around and find out how. Some of the stuff we're gonna need to make our ship's radio clock. We're gonna need a clock. I got mine from one of those hot dollar shops. It was only $10 Australian. We're gonna need some artwork. I found this online and worked it up in Photoshop, but I'm sure if you look around online, you'll be able to find a file. In fact, I'll put a link to the artwork that I used on this clock in the description below the video. Now, I've also decided I wanna make my clock uh, the color of brass or copper. So I went down to Super Cheap Auto and for $7, I bought myself some spray paint. Hi folks and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. In today's episode, we are going to do a really crafty little project, and that's the making of a ship's radio room clock. What is a ship's radio room clock? Stick around, we'll find out. Now, if you're interested in all things maritime, and you've seen ye old pictures of radio rooms on ships, you might have seen clocks with these wonderful, colorful little lines marked on them. Um, sectors that are red and sectors that are green. Now, you may have been thinking to yourself, what is that all about? It's actually pretty simple. The red zones at uh, quarter past and quarter to the hour, the three minutes, they were a three minute period of time where all transmissions on 500 kilohertz would stop and people would just listen. And on the green here, on the radio telephony calling frequency of 2182 kilohertz, you would have three minutes of silence at the half hour and the hour. Now, what are those silence periods for? Well, if a ship was in distress, you can well imagine that before the days of satellite communications and digital selective calling and all that great stuff, you would just have to listen for a call. It's very much like a day on 20 meters when there's a contest. There would just literally be thousands of ships transmitting. It would be very, very noisy. And because of that, if you were a ship in distress, you might have trouble being heard. So what they did was they came up with this dastardly plan that everyone has their clocks in their radio room, synchronized very accurately. And for three minutes, everyone just stops transmitting and listens. So if you're in distress, any, any time around this time here, you'd wait till this time and you would send your distress. Same deal here, but on radio telephony. So you had an opportunity to be heard. Now, people who watch this channel will probably know I had a very short period of time as a ship's radio officer. I don't profess to have been an expert operator. I did most of my time on uh, exploratory oil rigs, where I basically did clerical work, answering the phone, flight following of helicopters, talking to workboats, all that sort of stuff. But I did get very close to the end of my career, a little bit of time on a wireless telegraphy ship, which I was really happy about because I got to do it. I got to actually do the job for a short period of time. Most of the traffic was going by ARQ Telex by then, but I did get to receive all the weather and all the nav warnings via wireless telegraphy Morse code, via usually Melbourne radio or Sydney radio, VIS or VIM. And I also got to use the key a couple of times as well. So I was really happy about that. Now, this is a wonderful picture of me at the radio console on the Ormiston, which is a CSR ship. I also did a very, very short trip on the Kowalka, the sister ship, but uh, the Ormiston was the only one that was still fully wireless telegraphy. It didn't have any GMDSS or standard C satellite gear on board. So that was a lot of fun. And you can see um, above the console here is one of those clocks. You had to make sure you observed those silence periods and you would write in the log SPO, an acronym for silence period observed, or you would actually write silence period observed, which is what I normally did because I was really bored. Now, you will see those clocks on eBay, usually at uh, ship uh, scrapyards in India, and they will go for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, sometimes $500. Reproduction ones are even two or $300. Even cheap crappy plastic ones that you find online are still gonna cost you $100, $150. If you do buy one of the real ones, quite often the mechanism inside it is just a cheap quartz mechanism that you'd buy in your crazy hot dollar shop because these clocks were normally a master-slave arrangement with a master chronometer on the bridge 
would control all the slave modules throughout the ship. So the officer on watch would normally set the time and make sure that was accurate. And then um, the slave in the radio room would follow it. So uh, the guts of these clocks is normally, if it's a slave model, ripped out and they just put a cheap clock mechanism in it. So you're not really getting a real one anyway. But at any rate, I, if I ever get the chance to get a decent price one, I probably will grab it. But for the meantime, I really wanted to make myself a clock to put in the shack for the sake of nostalgia. Now, my first thought of, on this was to just jump onto my Red Bubble store, upload some artwork. They've got clocks there. Boom, I've got a clock. Well, that was a, a nice plan, but the uh, $30 clock, which is probably a $5 clock, they wanted like $30 or $40 to deliver it, which I think is highway robbery. So I thought, I reckon I can do better than that. We're gonna to have to segment our clock. I've removed the uh, four screws from here and it looked like it wasn't gonna come apart, but uh, what actually happens, which is quite weird, this pops out from the front. Now, don't have to worry about scratching it because we will be spraying all of this. And that means that the glass comes out here as well. And we are into the clock face here. So we'll see if we can get these hands off. Oh, they pop off too. How good is that? That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Now, I've used this part of the clock as a template to cut it out. As usual, a bit wonkitated, but uh, we'll work with it. We'll see how we go. We just glued it down with a little bit of uh, PVA. Nothing fancy. Let's uh, get this back together again. Five watts with a QRP QDX built as a kit. Um, my 2007 Mac and a piece of PVC pipe with a bit of um, wire stuck to it. And I just did a QSO with a station in the States, K1RH, 15,700 kilometers. I'm uh, pretty stoked about that. All my tools are gonna be <laughs> copper colored. <laughs> Can't be bothered moving them. We're just going to go through the second coat on the clock before we go to work. And here you have it, folks. One fully operational ship's radio room clock. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for sticking around right to the end. I always enjoy these crafty videos where I go and grab something that's quite cheap and I make it into something that I think is wonderful and that I'm gonna get a lot of enjoyment out of, like this Morse code key. Now, earlier episodes, people that have watched earlier episodes will have seen this. This is made from Bunnings bits and pieces. And when I built my completely homebrew station, receiver, transmitter, everything else, I built this key because I didn't have a key. Well, I've got probably a lot more keys now because I keep buying them because it's a little bit of a disease. 73, 
I'm VK2 AOE, and I'll see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.